Right, I've put the uh, boy band back together on a Sunday morning down at the harbour to discuss why this little thing was won and lost over the last near two months. Geoffrey, why don't we start with you? I don't think they had much chance before they started. I don't think they planned and prepared well enough for an Ashes. For an Ashes tour, you have to be up for it. The Aussies are. They're planning and waiting for us at least a year in advance. We just play cricket in England. We beat nearly everybody in England with the juke ball, two great fast medium bowlers. That's not going to work in Aussie. We should have been looking for fast bowlers and for a spinner. We've kept playing Moyn Ali, who's a batsman who bowls a bit, gets good runs. That's not going to work in Aussie. You need a proper spinner. And, we, and if Mason Crane was a spinner and only played in Sydney, why didn't he play last summer in a number of test matches? And then the preparation that they had before they started a test match, they were playing club sides. That's not good enough. You need, you need hard match practice against proper teams. You should be playing the top shield teams, four of them, and trying to win. And look, we do the same to them in England. When they come to England, they play our county size, they rest the best bowlers, the best batsmen, and they get poor preparation. So we should have talked to them and said, hang on, this has got to stop. This is not good for you, this is not good for us. Okay. You have to give us the top sides, Shield, we will give you the county sides and try and beat you. I played in county sides at Yorkshire. We beat Australia in 68, we beat India under Fred Truman because we tried to beat them. And the itinerary itself, they always have an itinerary just to make money. Cram the tests in, and then we'll go and play in New Zealand later on. We make, you know, more money. Really, you should have a test match and then a proper competitive match. Test match, proper competitive match. Test match, proper competitive match. I understand that Christmas and New Year, they have to be together because they make big money. But there's people like Gary Balance, if he'd ever been needed, who's he, you say? Is he on tour? Yes. He hasn't had a knock for ages. Even the players who were out of form couldn't get in form. The whole thing is a mishmash. I don't think they had any chance. And I said, if their fast bowlers are fit, they'll win 4-1, to 80-20. I'd go, I mean, the preparation you can talk about, I think the biggest um, part of the preparation that went, went wrong was Ben Stokes. Now, England had planned to play with their best all-rounder. Uh, the team are built around his character, the spirit that he shows, the quality that he shows on the pitch. And his incident, imagine a young captain, Joe Root, you know, all he's planning in the summer. I agree with Geoffrey about Mason Crane. He should have played against the West Indies if they felt that he was going to be the reserve spinner here. But you plan for two or three years in terms of the key all-rounder. You build your team around him, which they had. With Ben Stokes in the side, they could have gone with Mason Crane a bit sooner. They could have gone two and four, two spinners and, and four seamers. And then all of a sudden the incident happens and then that just derails the team. I, I agree with in terms of the, the lack of pace, but if you actually look at the, 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 the pitches that England have played on, the one thing that disappoints me more than anything that they've actually got the pitches that you would have wanted. It hasn't been quick, it hasn't been bouncy. Now, Brisbane was a slower wicket that I've ever seen here. So they should have been able to, with the bat, bat for longer periods. And that's been my real disappointment this tour, that the batsmen haven't been able to bat for long, long periods on these slow, low, kind of turgid Australian wickets. They're not the normal Australian wickets. They haven't been fast and bouncy. And that's been my big disappointment. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with Steve Smith for Australia. It's been absolutely... Magnificent and just proving to England how you should and can go on and get huge scores. England haven't had anyone who can get to 100 and then go on and on in the first three games, anyway. Alistair Cook did it at Melbourne, um, but all these other guys who you know get in, into positions in the game when Joe Root even admitted it, we were in positions in the first three games where you know very well set in the test match and they just drifted away straight away. 2010, when we won here under Andrew Strauss, we were very ruthless. But we were the better team then, we were the experienced side. England are not the experienced team here now, but they're not a million miles away from this Australian team, but at times they've looked it. Cos, to come back to the start, if you like, with what happened to Ben Stokes, were the Aussies ultra confident before a ball was bowled that they had much more ammunition and preparation than England? Yeah, I think so. Uh, especially if we could have kept that uh, fast bowling group together. And that's been a big standout to me. Being 10 or 15 uh, kilometres per hour quicker than the English attack is, is, is big in Australian conditions. So um, getting those guys playing together, their quality attack, that's been a big difference for me. Plus, uh, Nathan Lyon's uh, series has been excellent. Him bowling so well has enabled Steve Smith to rotate the fast bowlers around from the other end. We'll come back to the bowlers, particularly the spin bowlers in a moment, but in terms of the batting, obviously we talked pre-series about Cook and Root versus Smith and Warner. Yeah. That's been a big win for Australia. Why? Well, Cook, he didn't turn up for three tests. He got out. His footwork was poor, etc, etc. Everybody's seen it. 
And Joe batted well, but he only made 50s. Mm. Didn't go on and make 120, 30, 40, and others play around him. And that was the biggest factor. Their two turned up. Warner and Smith was exceptional, but Cookie made 244 in Melbourne, which is a wonderful performance, but it had no impact on the series or even that particular test match because the series was over, 3 0 down, and he only started to play when he didn't do it on purpose, obviously. But it really had no effect whatsoever. It'll be a statistic that people look at and used to come and say, wow, fantastic. But it did nothing for the Ashes. Yeah, I think I think if you actually look at the dismissals, you know, I think in 2013-14 out here, Mitchell Johnson bowled balls that not many batsmen can face. They were quick, they were short, sharp, swinging back into the right-handers, swinging away from the left-handers, some absolute jaffers with Ryan Harris as well, who was a wonderful bowler. Yeah. If you actually identify the dismissals this time with England, a lot of them have been their own mistakes. You know, they've been kind of pushed into a corner with a, a little bit of attritional bowling and they've not been able to cope. They've not been able to do the hard yards. David Milan has. You know, at times he's ground it out, he's kind of been willing to bat for an hour for not scoring too many, earned the right. You know, Joe Root's got out playing the pull show, he's got caught at, at uh, square leg late on in the day in Sydney. You know, Johnny Bairstow comes in out throwing his hands at the ball. Yeah. So if you actually identify the dismissals, it's not been, you know, jaffers and quality, it's been by the batsman's error. And that really disappoints me because, as I say, these pitches have given England a chance to bat for long periods. It's not that the normal of the Australian sustained, wickets. The sustained pressure from the Australian attack, you know, building pressure from both ends, keeping it on. And that's what causes the error. You think, you know, how am I going to get away here? You've got to go looking for something that's not quite there. Well, for but me, how, the, the how way. That, how does that an error when Vince is the perfect example? Well, we had a break for drinks and first ball he got out, didn't he? That, that's not pressure. He's just had a drink, talked to his mates. He's the perfect example of a horror story. What was in his drink? Yeah. <laughs> well, for I mean, me, the, the biggest problem for me is how they bat uh, batted against Nathan Lyon. From the off, it turned in Brisbane. They didn't expect it to turn. Womble went past the edge early on, and they were timid against Nathan Lyon for four te three test matches. All the left-handers especially. It's hardly got a, a right-hander out. They haven't even thought about that. They didn't break up the left-handers. They didn't get enough right-handers facing them. And the lefties all stood in their crease for the first two innings and all got out. And then Moe and Ali panicked at Melbourne, started running down the wickets. None of them have worked out a way to play the spin. And when it's turning and you're bowling spin, I'd play exactly how you used to play. As soon as I let go of the board, you'd run down the wicket. You'd get to, you'd smother the spin. You'd make me bowl a short one, but because I think he's coming, he's coming. All the guys just stood there. Mo and Ali uh, typified that actually. He did it every four, first four innings. He got out to Nathan Lyon. His dismissals became more and more meek until, in the end, at Adelaide, he was just a walk away. Well, that's preparation. Then comes back to my point. You prepare yeah. long before you get here. Who's going to bowl at me? You know, I'm going to get bounces. I practice. I duck and I weave. They're going to put two men back. I've got to be careful. When the spinner comes on, when I'm going to play him. I'm going to play in the simple V. You're going to, I'm going to play an innings. Smith's worked all that out before we came. Well, worked every, every bowler is worked out. There wasn't, it seems, enough of a plan for spin, was there? England no. have kind of relied on Moen Ali, but he isn't really a specialist. Well, I, no, with the ball, no. Moen's not had a great tour, uh, but he doesn't believe he's a spinner. He never will. You see him at Sydney, he was happier because Mason Crane played, took the pressure off him to be the spin bowler. And Jeffrey said it earlier, he's, he's, a, he's a batsman who bowls a bit, and he always will be. So until we find a spinner who's an out and out lead front, front line spinner, we're going to struggle. So, well, well, they, they should have known then the coaches. They should know his character in the dressing room. This is planning again, this is preparation. They should have said, OK, we get away with it in England because we use a lot of seamers, but in Australia, we. You know, that's not going to be the case. No. So they should have planned for that. How are we going to have somebody not mowing? Shouldn't they? Mason Crane should have bowled all summer. Or somebody else, Jack, oh, great. what you call him at Somerset. Leach, yeah. Give somebody a go and find a spinner. I think the, the, you know, Crane not playing in England, when he was always coming as the second spinner, was going to play here at Sydney. That was, it was terrible. It, it was still, but he, if you actually look at Moen Ali, I know he's a, he's a batsman that bowled, but he still disappoints me that you know, he's played 49 test matches. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for him not to just be able to change an angle, you yeah. know, change his run-up angle, just bowl a little bit wider, mm. bowl a little bit lower, yeah. you know, just change his release points. But I think you know, he's played 49 test matches. You can't suddenly behalf, just change a yeah. little bit in terms of where you're delivering the ball. Yeah. That's I, I slightly think worrying. That, to me, that just shows how low on confidence he is. Because he should be doing that, should be natural. He's not thinking about getting the guy out when he bowls. He's thinking about where it's going to land. And if, you're, if that's all you're thinking about, it, just please land it, land it, land it. All you'll do is bowl from the same place and let go. And because the Aussies are getting after him, he's not even thinking, how am I getting this guy out? Well, sure, that's down to the coaches to go to Mo and I said, look, Mo, I said, I know you're learning, but you've yeah, got to try a few things. Just try a few different things. He's down things. to the spin coach, but he's, well, he's, he's, he's been gone for two and a half weeks. We get away with, in England, 
with an exceptionally talented Jimmy Anderson. Very fine bowler in Stuart Broad. Two top class batsmen who bat well in England, Cook and Root. But and here. That's all rounder as well. Yeah, well, we can't talk about him. He's shot himself in the foot and hurt England. But the other four could have turned up more. But you know, when you get here, it's going to be amazing if Anderson and Broad can perform here like they do in England. That's all down. But the batting, he says, if you looked at the dismissals of all our batsmen compared with the Australian dismissals, they've got out more to good balls. We got out more to bad shots, haven't we? Michael's right. We've just given it away so many times. So in that sense, Hus is there almost a sense of an easy win here for Australia? Have England allowed Australia to win rather than Australia forcing the victory? Uh -huh. oh, I think Australia's forced the victory. I think they've played very, very good cricket. Um, for me, coming into the series, I was most worried about the unheralded uh, batsmen in the England top order, Vince, Stoneman and Milan, and uh, thinking, oh, how are these guys going to go in Australian conditions against this good Australian attack? And I think they've actually stood up at various stages throughout the uh, series. They've played really well, particularly Milan. He's been a real find for England mm. and a real positive for the tour. But, yeah, it, it was the, the senior players that uh, Jeffrey's been talking about that just didn't quite perform when, when they needed it, when they you needed to in the series. Perform. You're very diplomatic. <laughs> so who's they enhanced, didn't perform well. Who's enhanced their reputation from an English point of view other than David Milan? Oh, David milan has been outstanding. You know, I think he's, uh, he's played with a huge amount of control, courage, desperation at this level, you know, when you he's want to keep... He's in difficult situations yes. every time he's been under pressure. He's the one player against Nathan Lyon who's, who's been brave, started to use his feet, not to smack him over the top, to knock him off his line. I think, you know, in, in, in test match batting, you, you do need that desperation in your mind, you know, desperate to, to stay out there for long periods, desperate to stay into the sand, that's what he said. He said he's had this opportunity, it's come quite late, you know, he's been renowned as a T20 player, and that's what I really respect about him, because he got his... Um, job in the England test team for a t T20 innings, mm. but he's just changed the way, so it can happen. Yeah. And that really disappoints me again from an England batting perspective is that if you actually look at the English wicket bats home when they're swinging around, it actually encourages batsmen to play a few more strokes because they want to get a score before they get a good ball. I don't believe in it, but that's the way that England yeah. play. If you look at a lot of the England players, barring Alistair Cook, they're all stroke players. And on these flat wickets here in Australia, it actually allows you to just play the old attritional way of batting for long periods of time. Absolutely. And I would just challenge, have they got the mentality to bat for seven or eight hours or are they brought up on wickets that are doing plenty and a, a quick fire 80 wins them a test match or wins them a, a, a day's play. And over here, it's been proven that you need 150 pluses to try and compete with Australia on these kind of surfaces. Which, following on from Michael's comment, is right but if you hear the dressing room the players the coach the promote are we going to be positive aren't we which is another word for attacking that's not the way steve smith plays and he's blown england out of the water hasn't he, with his batting it just made it big slowly surely that is the old-fashioned test match. But I think it's, 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 we've got to be careful. I mean, I know you say that a lot, Sonny, about, you know, I don't think the teams have got that much difference. I think there's a huge difference I here. Mm, yeah. In Australia, in England, you know, in 19, I think England have a great chance of winning the Ashes. I, I worry about this Australian team coming to England because they will win there eventually. And this is a, a youngish Australian team that I think might get better. I, I do concern, if you look at the 21st century, if England lose here in Sydney, it's 25 test matches played. It'll be 19 losses in Australian conditions. We'd have won four and drawn two. 19 losses out of 25. So the golfing class here yeah. is monstrous. Yeah, that's fair enough. The other pluses have probably been the two young seamers. Yeah. Haven't they? They've done well. They haven't changed the test match. Well, they, Overton. Yes. Yeah. They, they haven't won anything because, the, as I say, the senior players haven't stood up. But they've shown something positive yeah. and good. Johnny Bester's wicket keeping has been excellent, yeah, hasn't it? Johnny's been, been top class. Because we've hardly noticed him with yeah. the gloves. Yeah. And he's stumping for Mason Crane's first ever test wicket. When someone goes down the wicket and gets beaten through the gate, and no one even batted an eyelid about Johnny who just whipped the bells off, he's had a very, very good yeah. with the bat as well. For me, Tom Curran as well, yeah. needs to shout. Not because of the, the numbers he's put down, but his overall approach and when he plays. Reminds me of his dad, Kevin, who, was, who had more self-belief than any cricket I've ever known in my life. Tom's got that in spades. And just the way he batted in the first innings at Sydney, the way he was driving on the up, flashy, no defensive strokes, trying to take the owners, you know, grab the momentum from Australia. No, I like didn't. that a lot. He did the same as well, didn't yeah. he? There was something bubbly and enjoyable. I mean, they didn't win the test or change it, but... Just their energy, wasn't it, Michael? They were it's the same about the leg spinner. You know, yeah. yes, 
Yesterday afternoon in Sydney, a young leg spinner bowling to Mitchell Marsh. This is probably the most excited I've, I've been all tour because you just saw a 20 year old loving his work. He was spinning <laughs> it past the outside edge. He could have got a wicket any ball. Yeah. And it's the first time that I watched, thought, wait a minute, we might find someone here. There's a long way. He's only 20 and there's loads of work to be done with him. But you just feel that England might have just found that spinner that they exactly. desperately need. Well, that's what I'm thinking. That's 20 years worth of ashes for us because we've got the new Shane Warne. <laughs> <laughs> the no danger pressure. is that England will go back to safety first yes. and we'll play Ben Stokes when he's available and only based on hand. We'll have mowing because that's a safety valve because the top five aren't that good. So we'll have a middle order that's the best in the world and Moyne will just bowl a few, but Jimmy will bowl them out with Stuart, won't they? and another seamer, and he'll just nip in a wicket. So Mason Crane gets 12th man, carry the drinks yeah. again. It wants preparation and planning ahead. Yeah. It wants people I, I, who know Test cricket to think, yeah. this is not it. He has to play, I don't care about the others. And I think he will, boy, because I think when, well, I when, so. when, when, when Ben comes back in, and I'm sure it'll be this year, I think you look at the, the formation of England, I'm sure Ben Stokes will go to five, Johnny Bowes to six, Mo and Ali will go to seven, then allows Chris Wokes to go eight, then you've got Broad and Anderson, nine and ten, and then Mason Crane, eleven, so you've got four seamers yeah. and two spin bowlers with Mo and Ali in so there as well. Four batsmen, are we? Well, that, well, Ben Stokes will be five. Okay. You'd see him yep. as a batsman. Okay. Then Johnny Bairstow, you'd say he's a batsman. He's averaging 14 test match cricket. And Moeen Ali gets that number seven spot. I think that's the formation that England should. And I think they will go within uh, the calendar. I go year. different. I leave Moeen out. I play Stokes at six, Bairstow seven. The young spinner would play um, Seamers. But I want five batsmen because our five batsmen aren't that good. Yeah. <laughs> so in a way, what happens in two years' time, we can talk about it, but that's not really the big issue for England. The big issue is that they're not getting any clue. In fact, they're getting further away from being competitive, generally on foreign soil and particularly here. Yeah, well, I think the investment in the spin is important uh, to have success here in Australia, but also to find some proper pace That's bowlers. Nice. You know, we, we've talked about Anderson and Broad, and they, they have. They've been great bowlers yeah. for a long time, and I admire their longevity. But in Australia, they yeah, find it well. tougher. In England, they're absolutely outstanding. So having a couple of bowlers that can bowl 90-plus uh, mile an hour is important here in Australia. Uh, and then, yeah, like, like Vaughan was sort of talking about, you need batsmen that are willing and prepared to do the hard yards for long, long periods of time. 80s and 90s, 60s and 70s, they don't win your test matches here in Australia. You need to score 100, 150s, 200s. That's what you need. And they're good batting conditions. Yeah, and, and I actually think what England need to do now, I mean, if you actually look at some of our test weeks over the last few years, they've been green, they've been juicy, you know, get a test match win under your belt, fantastic, yeah, win. But is it going to prepare England's test team for being able to play yeah. overseas? No. So what would I do back home? I'd make sure all the test match wickets, and probably Jimmy and Stuart Broad will be shouting at me, going, no, I want some grass on it. <laughs> prepare the best wicket possible to last five days, make them flat. The juke ball will always do something with overhead conditions, but make them real good batting wickets. So batsmen do learn how to bat for long periods of time because they're not going to be fearful of an absolute beauty in the first morning because it's green and it's damp. You know, allow them to bat for long periods. And then the bowlers will have to bowl a bit quicker and they will have to have a yeah. spinner that spins it, you know, because the pitches will be better. For England to be a good test match team overseas, the wickets back home have got to be. If you look what happened to the one day side three years ago, when they wanted to play this expansive game get 350 pluses they changed the wickets in England they started to play on flat one day wickets which allowed the batsman to play this fearless way it's helped the one day team I think the test wickets now have got to be very flat and if they deteriorate on days four and five that's a perf perfect also, test match stop talking before and about positive attacking cricket keep that for the one dayers they've got to play test match cricket like Smith and Australia are doing so you get out at 70 and it's your fault don't come back to the dressing room. Where would you send them? <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would keep me out of the middle for sure. That's it. <laughs> I just knew you it were going to say that. <laughs> there, there is, a, there is a, a wider issue for all international teams, actually, isn't there, about playing mm. overseas? Well, this is, uh, is going to be my point. Um, the whole world game at the minute is happy to win at home. We're happy to play on green tops. India are happy to win in India on you know, bunts and burners. Everyone's got to learn a way to play better cricket overseas. I'm not convinced this Australia team would be as competitive in England because I don't think their batsmen can play swing bowling. The one time it swung in this series at Adelaide, they were all at sea, bowled out of 120. So I think it will be very tempting for England to just have green tops in two years' time. It won't cure anything in four years' time here. Another area that they de England desperately need to be honest is how bad we are batting against spin. When you come to Australia, it should be the easiest time you'll ever get batting against spin. There's no harder place for a finger spinner to bowl than here. And yet we've made Nathan Lyon look unplayable at times. When we go to India in two years' time, we'll get absolutely destroyed if we don't... Sri Lanka at the end of the year will be a challenge yeah, yeah. for them. Yeah, yeah. So, so ask then, who is teaching them? 
They have coaches, bowling, batting, head coaches. What the hell are they doing? Simple. But what we don't want is a predictable Ashes mm. cost, do we? No, neither team really benefits from that, do they? No, I, I agree. We want to see a good contest. Uh, we, well, over here we want to see Australia win. But, but I think in, in a couple of years' time it's going to be interesting. And, and I guess my... My questions, I guess, for you guys, that extra pace in the Australian attack, is that going to be as effective in England? Because I know Brett Lee in the past battled a little bit, you know, and you can use the pace of, uh, of, of Brett Lee uh, to, to good effect. For yeah. So I think it's going to be really tough for Australia to go over to England. Well, We're Aust trying different yeah. things. Yes. The Australians missed a trick last time. They didn't play Peter Siddle till the last test match, and that's the style of bowler that you yes. require. Someone that just bowls channel, top of off stump, just move the ball a little bit either way. So, Hazelwood will bowl well. Yeah, we don't want to give you any kind of advice, but you need that style of bowler. <laughs> Hazelwood will bowl well and Stark will because... They'll have nothing to defend. He gets though, 100 all out every day. <laughs> no, Stark and Hazelwood will bowl well if they fit. Stark will give me a bit expensive, not necessarily be a great bowler. He's a bit more expensive than most. But he gets wickets. He has a knack of bowl in you. Unplayable, really good bowl. But England ball. have got to be careful. If they just think they're going to arrive in 19 and beat this Australian side because they've got the Duke ball to move around, you know, this Australian side are just on the yeah. way up. The England side yeah. might just be on the... With Broad and Anderson, they're not going to get yeah. any better. Yeah. 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 Anderson's, might not if be Anderson's playing. not playing too... Jimmy United. might not be the, playing. You, England have, have relied on Jimmy Anderson. The run is brilliant yeah. at home, especially for the last decade. That is there another guy who can run, swing it both ways with the same talent? There's not at the minute. So that could be a massive problem. If he goes, then Australia would become firm favourites. Gentlemen, thank you very much. More questions than answers. I hope you've brought your bathers, though, because the SEG is that way. <laughs> <laughs>